Ask most people what they remember about 1 Corinthians, and I'm willing to bet that the first thing that'll come to mind for them is 1 Corinthians 13, Paul's great chapter on love. Many can quote portions of it, if not the whole thing. But as great as 1 Corinthians 13 is, I put my money on chapter 15 as the most important of this letter. It is here that we learn the most about what the resurrection means. And the resurrection, after all, is at the very heart of the Christian faith. Hello, I'm Stuart Baskin, pastor of First Presbyterian Church of Tyler, Texas, and this is your daily devotional for Friday, October 15th, 2021. Those of you who have ever attended a service I've conducted following someone's death, whether you call it a funeral or a memorial service, know that I talk about the resurrection a lot. I've told innumerable people that if you ever catch me conducting such a service in which I don't mention the resurrection, you have my permission to take me out back following the service and give me a good thrashing. It is that important. In fact, if you pay close attention, we don't even use the words funeral or memorial service in the printed bulletin. It is a service of witness to the resurrection. Paul's discussion of the resurrection reveals that he considers it to be the most important element in the faith as well. Here's how he begins this chapter, chapter 15 of 1 Corinthians. Now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which you also stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve, then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared, appeared also to James, then to all of the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. Jesus died for our sins. He was buried. He was raised from the dead. And he appeared to a host of people. This is what Paul considers to be of first importance in the faith. What's missing here? Nothing of Jesus' birth. Nothing about his life. Nothing about his teachings. Nothing about his miracles. Does this make those things unimportant? By no means. But it is to say that the most important thing to know is that he died for us and that he was raised from the dead. But there is something else to say about the relationship between Christ's life and his death and the resurrection. And we get hints of this in the Gospels if we pay close attention. That is, understanding Jesus' life, his teachings, his miracles, his birth, all of it, it doesn't make complete sense apart from his death and resurrection. It is why, for example, you frequently hear Jesus say after a miracle or a healing that those who witness it should say nothing to anyone about it. Why? Because apart from his death and resurrection, these things are just miracles. But in light of the resurrection, they become signs whose meaning transcends the acts themselves. They become signs of the kingdom of God, a kingdom in which God has acted decisively to reverse the reality of sin and its consequence, death. The other thing to notice here, there is a chain of witnesses. I handed on to you what I in turn had received, says Paul. There is no knowledge of the resurrection apart from an unbroken chain of people who bear witness to it. This may sound simple, but it is a profound truth. You and I heard about the resurrection from someone else. I don't remember the first time I heard about it, and you probably don't either. But someone told us. Maybe it was in a sermon, 
or maybe it was in Sunday school. Maybe it was our parents or our grandparents. Whoever it was and whenever it happened, somebody told us. Somebody bore witness. And that tells us something about our task as Christians. You see, our fundamental task as Christian people is to bear witness to the resurrection. Nothing else we say or do comes close to this in importance. Tomorrow, after some tortured logic, Paul gives us a glimpse at the entire story of the Bible in just two brief verses of 24 words. But for now, may God continue to bless you and keep you in all that you do this day and in all the days ahead.